Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host, Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. You can uh, subscribe uh, via a variety of ways. On our website, we have links to uh, subscribe to an Og Vorbis feed, an MP3 feed, and a video feed that's compatible with a wide range of playback devices. You can also find us on YouTube, uh, blip.tv, Daily Motion, and uh, TuneIn and Stitcher.com. So there's a bunch of ways you can uh, watch and or listen to the show here. So uh, do feel free to do that. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the cool stuff that I found for this episode. Starting off at Hackaday, there's a 33-node Beowulf cluster built with Raspberry Pi. That's right. Uh, there's a uh, Josh Kuypert. Capert, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. I'm sorry. Uh, he built the 33 no node Beowulf cluster. He made sure it looks impressive, even though you don't know what it is. So uh, basically, the biggest problem he had was the power distribution PCBs. Uh, so the Raspberry Pis are each powered through the GPIO headers. Uh, there's an RGB LED, which is illuminated in blue uh, with the images above. This looks pretty neat. Definitely uh, check it out. Um, there was also a 64 node cluster that we saw a while back, but this 33 node cluster looks uh, pretty cool. And there's a YouTube video of it too, so definitely check it out. From likecool.com in their uh, gear home style car body videos or whatever section this is, uh, in, uh, actually under their gear and video sections, there's a YouTube video they have posted. It's the first footage of an F-35B performing a vertical takeoff and also a vertical landing. So this is the new F-35 Lightning II, the B version, which does the uh, vertical takeoff and landing VTOL. And uh, pretty awesome. It doesn't look quite the same as how I remember the prototype. So obviously the, the design appears to have changed somewhat. But uh, still pretty impressive nonetheless. Definitely check it out. I think it's just cool. From Gear Live, that's right. Uh, Microsoft has announced the Xbox One. This is the uh, going to take over from the Xbox 360. It's now called the Xbox One. Um, at today's Xbox reveal event, Microsoft announced the Xbox One. Don Matrick took the stage and said that the Xbox One is a truly all-in-one box that is simple, instant, and complete. So uh, it's a dual-tone black color scheme with a slot-loading Blu-ray drive. Um, you also get the standard Xbox power button with the ring of light surrounding it. I don't know if that's such a good idea. So... Uh, Looking at it, it looks kind of like an older set-top box, which is weird. You would expect it to be kind of sleek and everything, but it, you know, I'm looking at a picture of it right now, and it literally looks like, you know, something that you would pretty much ignore. So interesting. Um, it does come with eight gigs of RAM, an octo-core processor. That's right, octo-core processor and ships with a 500 gigabyte hard drive. The, a Blu-ray drive is included along with USB 3 and 802.11n Wi-Fi. So there's no 802.11 uh, AC. Um, the next generation of Connect, Connect ships with the Xbox One. It's now supporting sporting a 1080p wide-angle camera that is now even more precise and can sense slight twists of the wrist and shoulder. The new controller has uh, 40 design changes. This is pretty awesome. Definitely check this out, um, especially if you are a gamer. From Hackaday, an electric motorcycle hits the rating, racing circuit. I thought this was pretty neat. I, you know, I'm into electric vehicles. I kind of, you know, that's kind of my thing. Uh, 
So this electric motorcycle is, I thought was pretty neat. Uh, check out the, that beefy electric motor. This thing has a massive electric motor on it. Um, pretty awesome. Um, so basically this bike is built from the ground up. It's uh, competitive with production line motorcycles and his most recent test runs, the guy who uh, made this Jackson Edwards, um, are pointing to success. The film shows off a couple of problems with the rear suspension. Um, pretty neat. There's a YouTube video. I love it when people post YouTube videos like this. Definitely check it out. From Uber Gizmo, how many of you are Tumblr users? I'm not a Tumblr user. I, I'm, I've been considering signing up for Tumblr as another point of distribution, but personally, I'm not a Tumblr user. Well, guess what? Tumblr is being acquired by Yahoo for $1.1 billion. That's right. Billion with a capital B. I wish I could do something like that. That would be so awesome. Yeah. $1.1 billion. What does this even mean for Tumblr? I don't know. I'm not a Tumblr user. Do you think I should sign up for Tumblr? I might. I've been considering it. You know, it's yet another distribution point. So it makes me wonder, you know, how many distribution points I really need. I'd rather everybody just come to my website over at quicksurf.com. From Hack A Day, ATX Ras Pi is a smart power source for your Raspberry Pi. That's right. One aspect of the Raspberry Pi that has always challenged us is the power supply. It was a great idea to power the board from a standard micro USB port because the economy of scale makes phone chargers, even in the one amp range uh, necessary, cheap and easy to acquire. The thing that is missed the most is the ability to power the device on and off using the built-in hardware, which kind of sucks. Uh, the quandary has been has given rise to many different solutions, and the ATX Raspi, Raspi Smart PSU is one of the better ones uh, that have uh, come across. It's nicely packaged, take on the pick-based version that uh, was featured about a year ago. It's basically a small bridge that a small PCB that acts as a bridge between the micro USB power supply and the Raspberry Pi board. You've got several breakout headers. It gives you a real easy way to power the Raspberry Pi on and off. Definitely check it out. They have a YouTube video here of it in action. So if you have a Raspberry Pi and you're looking for an easy way to power it on and off, this may be what you are looking for. From Mashable, how Klingon became a universal language. What? That's right. Star Trek. Klingon. When Mark Okren graduated from University of California, Berkeley with a degree in linguistics decades ago, he never guessed he'd become the mastermind behind a language with one of the biggest cult followings in the world. Klingon, the official language spoken by the fictional warrior race in the Star Trek franchise, has taken on a life of its own. In addition to being newly added to Bing's language translator feature, this I did not know, it's been translated into Shakespeare, has its own language institute, and is spoken all over the world. Okay. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of Star Trek and Star Wars and pretty much anything science fiction. but And I've heard that Klingon is a language spoken, but I didn't know that it had gone quite this Far, I guess, for lack of a better way of saying it. But still, nonetheless, pretty neat. Definitely check that out. From Hackaday, flocking behavior using Mindstorm robots? That's right. Do you ever wonder why geese always fly together in a V-shape? Huh? It's called the act of flocking. And it's long been a subject of fascination when it comes to robotics. So Scott Snowden has researched the topic while working on his degree a few years ago. And uh, he got a demonstration of it working with Lego Mindstorm robots. So definitely check it out. Again, there's a YouTube video. I love YouTube videos. So pretty neat. From likecool.com, Aspatec Modular SLR Camera System is being featured here. A team from the University of Applied Science in Schwarzbichgulung, Germany. I have no idea how to say that 
has created Aspect. It's a modular mirrorless SLR camera system that lets users attach and use different accessories and older lenses that are not normally supported by SLR cameras. Separate modules house a series of different components, including a 24 megapixel full frame CMOS sensor, a battery with ergonomic grip, a high quality OLED monitor, and a computing processor. The Aspect system also has a Thunder also has Thunderbolt extensions that expands its connectivity and memory slots that can increase its memory cards, a hard drive, or flash memory. This is pretty neat. So basically, it's a bunch of stuff that you can stack together to form the, this camera system. Wow. You know, it'd be pretty interesting to see uh, how well this works in practice, you know. And, and whether or not you can come up with really weird camera systems. I mean, the pictures that they have here show it to be fairly boxy and longish, but still, I, this looks pretty cool. If you know, I, I wonder if they can really make it work. Anyway, uh, that's about it for this episode of The Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes. You can find those online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show. There's a subscribe heading in the show notes for every episode that have the links. Uh, you can also find me online and follow me online in a variety of other places. I have those also all linked up in the show notes as well. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye.